Okay, so today, uh, as a way of introducing modifiers, we're going to make this barrel. And this barrel uses um, uses a lot of modifiers in its construction. So if I go to my modifiers panel, which is this little wrench icon, um, I have I just made one plank. Okay. This is all it is, is this one plank. But with modifiers, it becomes a barrel. Uh, and then these rings are just a, a single ring of faces that I've added three separate modifiers to a shrink wrap, a subdivision, and a solidify. And then this top bit, I did use a mirror modifier, but otherwise it's just kind of normal geometry. So this is what we're going to make. And it can be a little tricky at parts, but if you follow along, we'll take our time and we'll get there together. And you'll all have wonderful barrels at the end of this. So, we'll do a new scene. And I don't need to save. The very first step is going to be finding reference. Figuring out what is your barrel going to look like. I'm not going to follow anything too closely, but I do want to call out that having reference is important. So, reference is good. Don't forget to use it. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this light and this camera for now. I'll add them back when I need them. And we have a cube. We will keep the cube, though. The cube is useful. First thing I'm going to do is double click on cube in the outliner, and I'm going to rename it to barrel underscore plank, because that's what this is going to be. And uh, what we need to do is size this into a plank. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to go into front view. And the first thing I want to do is just move this up so it's sitting on the ground. So I'm going to hit G to move it, Z to constrain it to the Z axis, and then 1 on the number pad and hit return. I've moved it up one unit and now it's sitting on the ground. Lovely. Uh, I'm going to go into wireframe and just click and drag across the top to get all four vertices. And I'm going to move those up one more unit. I'm going to do it a different way this time. I'm going to show you snapping. And that's this top menu up here. You've got this little magnet icon and a menu next to it that, that you can decide what increment or what, uh, what you want to snap to. We're going to leave it on increment. Increment is the grid. All right. So now with that on, I can hit G. And you can see as I move it around, it only moves in these little increments. I can hold down shift and it will move in smaller increments or control and then nothing will happen. It'll actually temporarily turn off snapping. Um, but I'm just gonna move it up one more unit and leave it there. Okay, so that's snapping. We'll get, we'll get into snapping some more later. Um, so now I have roughly three, not roughly, an exactly three unit tall plank uh, again, I'm selecting this in wireframe mode. I can also go to my view, area, toggle quad view, and you can kind of see all angles here. So here's my perspective view, and then we have the right side, the top, and the front. So I'm going to scale this in all three dimensions, but at individual times. So I'll start in the front view, and I'm going to scale it to what I think roughly the width of the plank should be. Okay, it, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm just trying to rough in the shape of a plank. Get the side view, and this is going to be the kind of the thickness of the board. So I'm going to scale along the Y axis, and this needs to be pretty skinny. We can double check everything in the uh, in the perspective view. It's looking pretty good. And maybe I'll scale it just a little bit more and then uh, the height is already good I'm gonna go back to uh, turn off quad view and just focus on perspective uh, but it can be a nice tool to use uh, the next thing these boards need to have a little bit of curve to them um, even without the you know once we, we duplicate them in a circle so I'm gonna add uh, actually, before I do that, 
I want to just give the edges a little bit of depth. So I'm going to go to edge mode and I have everything selected. I'm going to right click and I'm going to bevel the edges. See, command or control B is the shortcut. And I don't want to go too far. If you go way too far, you get that and that's not, don't do that, that's bad. Um, I'm just going to hold down shift and just a slight bevel, something like that. Okay. And you see it, it uh, kind of chamfers the edges a little bit. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to add two edge loops down the center vertically. So that's control R to add the edge loops. And then I'm going to use the scroll wheel to set it to two. Left click to add them. And then it, when, when it's in slide mode, I'm going to right click to keep them in the center. Then in the top view, I'm just going to move them along the y-axis just a little bit, just to give a little bit of shape to them. I don't want to go too far, so just the smallest amount, okay? I'm going to do probably the first tricky bit, and that is actually duplicate these in a circle around the center. So the first thing we want to make sure is that our object uh, center or the pivot point is at the center of our scene. So hopefully yours is, if it isn't for whatever reason, we can fix that. So what we want to do is make sure that our 3D cursor here is at the center of our scene. So I'm going to hit Shift C to center it. And then I can select in object mode. I can select my uh, plank, go to object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor and it will snap my origin to the 3D cursor if it isn't already there. The origin, again, is this little orange dot. Okay. Um, one other note with uh, beveling, this, uh, somebody ran into this. Uh, if you are scaling, let me just undo a few steps. If you scaled in object mode, Let's say I'll just I'll scale it in the x-axis a bit. Just go extreme for the example. Um, if you did that and then you try to bevel, you're going to notice this uneven bevel. And the reason you get this uneven bevel is because if I hit N, you can see in object mode our scale is at 6.8, 1 and 1. Uh, if you scale in edit mode, this would stay at one. So what we need to do is we need to apply this scale. And so to do that, you go to object, apply, scale. And then when I try to bevel in edit mode, you can see everything stays nice and even. Okay, that's another reason why scaling in, in edit mode is generally a better idea. Okay, but I'm, I will undo that. There we go, get back to here. Quickly, I will add my bevel back, add in a couple edge loops, try to keep this centered up for you. Okay. So uh, the next thing with my center point or my pivot point centered, I need to in edit mode, I'm going to hit A to select everything and then G, Y to move it away from the center, adjust in the Y direction. And I'll move it about two units. I'll need to bring it back in later, but I need it far enough away that I can do the next part. So this is where we will add in our first modifier, which is going to be an array modifier. We're going to set the count to 18. Okay. So the count's at 18. And then instead of a relative offset, we want to use an object offset. And now we need to add this object. So again, with the 3D cursor centered, shift C if it isn't already. I'm going to add in, in object mode, I'm going to add in an empty. And I'll just do plain axis right there. I'm going to name this empty, empty underscore um, plank rotate. I want to be specific about this because I'm going to have a couple of empties here. 
and then we can select our plank, set our object offset on the array modifier to that empty. And now we can select the empty and rotate it around the z-axis. You see as we rotate it, we're slowly making the shape of a barrel. Now I did the math for you. We have 18 planks, uh, 360 degrees in a circle. So 360 divided by 18, that's going to uh, mean we want 20 degree rotation. So I can just type in 20 and hit return. If I go in the top view, you can see that the planks are evenly spaced. They're just a little separated. That's not going to hold a whole lot of anything. So to fix that, we're going to select our plank again, go back into edit mode, and move it in the y direction back towards the center. They don't have to touch, uh, they just have to get close. Okay? So now, let's fill in these gaps between the planks. I'm going to go into the top view, vertex mode, and wireframe. Okay, so seven on the number pad for top view, uh, one on the keyboard on the top line to go into vertex mode, or you can just click up here on the top left. Z and wireframe. Wireframe mode, because if we were in solid view and we try to select these vertices, it's not going to select the bottom ones. You can see these bottom vertices haven't been selected. But if we go into wireframe and select, now it's going to select both of them, and that's what we want. So just from top view, I'm just going to move these around a little bit so that they line up. And you can see, as I move over here, you can see how it's affecting all of them. So I just need to get kind of close. That works. And the same thing with these outside ones. I don't want to move all the way over because that's a weird shape. I'm just going to move like halfway. And then I'll move the other side, the other half, and have it kind of meet in the middle. Just give it a slightly more even appear appearance. OK. So once I have that, I'm going back into solid view. That's looking pretty good. Next part is we want to add this outside kind of curve to the barrel. And you can do this without modifiers, but you can also do it with modifiers. I will show you the without modifiers if you prefer. Um, the way that I would do it is just add a couple of edge loops here, add them to the center, and just move them away. Okay, but now we need to also like refill in these gaps. So you can do it, and it works fine. Um, that's actually the way that I used to do it, and then I realized that I can use a modifier, and that's more fun. Um, the modifier that we're going to use, I'm going to add the modifier, it's the simple deform. Okay, it's in the third column, just past halfway down. Simple deform. When I add that, one, things get weird. Um, I'm going to collapse the array. We have four different things that this can do. It can twist, it can bend, it can taper, and it can stretch. Now, with the bend, you're not really going to notice a bend. It just looks like a slant, and that's because there's not a whole lot of detail here. So I am going to uh, add, we'll say, five edge loops here. I'm going to add just so that it's got a little bit more detail, and that's going to be important when we do the stretch. Now, here's, here's the stretch. Um, it is stretching in the wrong direction, so we're going to change the axis to Z, which is the vertical axis. And right now we have this funnel shape, which is cool, but not what we want. Um, we can bring the factor down, and we can go, if we go negative, okay, now we have this like rocket engine cone sort of shape. Um, but that's not quite it either. And the reason it's not working is because uh, it's it's stretching around the origin of our uh, the origin of our um, plank. 
uh, which is at the bottom, and we need to bring that up to the center. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, so in order to move the origin, uh, we're going to move the 3D cursor and set that where we want the new origin. I want to keep it in the center, but uh, I need to move it up. And if we remember correctly, the height of these planks is three units, and I want the origin to be halfway up. So I'm going to set my 3D cursor. If you hit N to bring up your view properties, uh, go to the view tab, and then you have this 3D cursor section. We can manually set the location of the 3D cursor. I'm just going to move the Z up to about two, to halfway, so one and a half units. Once I have it there, I know it doesn't look like it's halfway. Um, and that's because the array modifier is visible. If I turn that off, you can see that it is halfway. Uh, with that halfway, so 1.5, I'm going to go to Object, Transform, or not Transform, Set Origin to 3D Cursor. Okay, that's kind of what I was afraid of. By doing that, it, uh, it screws up our array uh, in the circle. So we need to move our rotation object back up. So we're going to move, if we just select our empty and hit shift S, we're going go, to snap our selection to cursor. Okay, this is the snap menu. There's a lot of different things you can do with it, but if we go to selection to cursor, it'll fix everything. Okay, so now our origin is back at the center. And uh, the, the array is fixed as well. Be realizing why did we go through the trouble of moving the origin at the beginning if we just needed to reset it. And that's because when I rehearsed this four times today, uh, I did it a different way, and this way is slightly simpler, so that's why. But point is our origin is back at the center. Now, if we go back to our modifiers and turn on our simple deform, you can see that it is deforming in both on both sides. And now if we bring our factor negative, we can get a nice barrel shape. And even though we're deforming it, the seams are still staying together. Okay, so we don't have to fix those seams again. Okay. An alternative if you didn't want to move the origin, uh, and this is the way that I had, I had done it previously, is you can just add another empty or another object and set that as your origin. And it will and we'll use that. So you have a few different options there. So that's a barrel shape. Uh, if you wanted to make it look a little bit better, you can right click on it and shade it smooth. Okay. Um, and we can even you see it looks a little bit almost puffy. Uh, so what we can do, we could add a subsurface uh, modifier. It's probably the simplest way. So the subsurface will make things look nice. Uh, turn on optimal display and all of that. I might also move it up in the, eh, it doesn't really need to do that. These up and down arrows will move it in the stack, but we can keep it at the end. Um, the last thing is, is you'll notice the planks are separating a little bit up here at the top. So I'm just gonna add an edge loop at the top and at the bottom. Okay, as well as uh, on the sides here. Well, those aren't really doing as much as I'd like them, so I'll leave them off. It can be a little bit of a gap, that's fine. You can always just move the whole plank in and tighten things up. Okay, so there's our basic barrel shape. Next up will be the metal bands around the side. For the rings, uh, I'm gonna go in object mode, and with our with my 3D cursor centered, I'm gonna add in a cylinder. And I'm gonna go to my properties before I do anything else. And the vertices I'm gonna set to 18. I'm gonna drag the radius up, so I'm just gonna left click and drag on radius and make it larger than the barrel. 
Doesn't matter how much, just larger. Uh, I'm also going to set my cap fill type to nothing. And I can also bring my depth down so it's roughly the size of a band. Okay. There we go. That's all the modeling that we have to do for the iron bands. Now it's just three modifiers. Three different modifiers we haven't used yet, actually. The first one is called shrink wrap. It's on the third column, about halfway down, just above simple deform. Shrink wrap. And click on that. And it's going to turn red at first. You see the, the name is in red. That means it's not working because it needs more information. The information it needs is a target. It needs to know what it's shrink wrapping to. Okay. So I'm going to click on the target field, and it's going to show me all the available objects that it could shrink wrap to. In this scene, it can only choose one, which is the barrel plank, and click on that. And now it is stuck to the surface of the plank. As I move, if I move it in the Z direction, up and down, you can see it changes size according to how big the barrel is at that point. So I'll move it up to the top. At this point, I'm going to rename it. I'll call it... Uh, Iron band. And I want to set the mode here to the outside surface, just to be sure. I also, if we if we kind of look at this really closely, it's only snapping the vertices to uh, to the surface. So just these corners. I want to give it a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna go into edit mode. And we can even turn on our edit cage modifier so you can see. If we turn that on, you can see exactly what it's snapping to. But I'm just going to make sure I have everything selected. So I'm going to just hit A once, and it should select everything if you don't have anything selected. I'm going to right-click on it and subdivide it just once, just the default. And now it's going to just be a little bit smoother. Uh, the next thing that I need to do is give it some thickness, and that's going to be with the solidify modifier. It's going to add solidify, and it's this first slider here, thickness. I'm going to bring that up, and you see as it's adding the thickness, it's going in. So we can either go negative with it, which is probably the easiest way, or you could adjust the offset on the shrink wrap modifier and go. Um, positive with the thickness on the solidify modifier. Either one works. It's probably easier if you just leave the offset of the shrink wrap at zero and then just adjust the thickness in the negative direction and you get something like that. Um, oh, that's the wrong key. There we go. Uh, the last thing would be to add a subsurface modifier. Smooth it out a little bit. I'm going to turn on optimal display and set the viewport up to 2. Now it's a little bit soft. So I'm going to go into edit mode on this. And again, we just have this very simple geometry. Uh, and I'm going to add an edge loop at the top and at the bottom. And I'm going to right click and shade it smooth. And that's it. That's our metal bands. And what's really nice about this is I can duplicate this and hit Z to move it in the Z direction. And it's going to duplicate everything. The modifiers are doing their job. Shift D, Z, D, Z. And now I have, OK, it seemed to have gotten a little bit screwy there at the, at the end. So let me undo a couple of those. There we go. And there's our metal bands. That I did, because now all the hard stuff is done. Um, for, I'm just going to add a cube here. And this was my top plank. So I just moved it up, um, scaled it down to roughly plank size, scale it along the x axis, and make it a little bit skinnier. And then. Uh, we'll go top view and wireframe. 
I'm going to select these vertices. And I'm just going to move them, G to move, and then Shift Z to exclude the Z axis. And I'm just going to move it so it roughly file, follows the shape. I can also do it this way. So it roughly follows the shape of the barrel. Okay. Um, and so I just did this three times, and then I used the mirror modifier to duplicate it across. So if we select everything and kind of move it over, and then we add a mirror modifier, I only have to do half the work. Okay. And you can still like select all the edges and bevel them a little bit. Um, you can see that I scaled in object mode, so that's getting weird. So I'm going to undo that and apply my rotation, or apply my scale. And now I'll bevel it and it'll be smooth. Okay. And then again, just like we did with the vertical planks. Oops. Oh, there we go. I can kind of tweak these manually and get them where I want them. Kind of jump back and forth between wire frayed and shaded. Um, you'll see that I need, just move that along the y-axis. I'm going to need a little bit more detail here because we have this gap and I don't want that. So I'll just add an edge loop and I'll scale it along the y-axis and make that fit. And just kind of do that down the length of the barrel. You see I need to do it on the other side too. Um, and so that's really all I did. I will open up my other barrel. Okay, this one does have some shading on it. Um, they're very simple. You can see the shaders here. They're very simple. I basically just made this one brown and turned off the, um, or turned down the specularity and turned up the roughness and the metal bands, um, just gray added the metallic, pulled off the specular. Not requirement by any means, but I figured I would show that. You can see the finished, uh, oh, I've got that turned off. You can see the finished geometry on these planks. Okay, if I hit Control L, it'll just select one of them. And you can see, very simple, just a couple of edge loops to give it some shape. And then I added a ground, and that's the, just the default light and camera um, to look like that. So, and again, if I go back to my original plank, select it all. We don't need to be in rendered view. If I select my original plank, you can see the the uh, the array and the deform and subdivision. All the modifiers are still there, so I can still move it around and make adjustments and everything, within reason, uh, everything will follow. Now, if I go too far, it's gonna go outside the original scale of the bands and they'll, they'll flip to the inside. But if you need to make a little bit of adjustments, you can um, pretty easily. So that's how to make a barrel with a bunch of modifiers. Obviously there are other ways to do it, but uh, I like that way. And once you get comfortable with modifiers, it can be a pretty quick way. Um, I know it's, couple things just to to watch out for if you're going into trouble make sure that if I hit N make sure your scale uh, is set to 1 so just object apply scale that'll cause issues um, also make pay attention to where your origin points are um, I, I did this one slightly differently than the one I just walked through uh, where instead of resetting the origin of the barrel I just added a second empty and made that the origin for the uh, deform to, to make my barrel shape, but um, either way works.